Um, my name is Chris Elides. I am an art and art history major, concentrating in 2D studio art, as well as pursuing, pursuing a minor through our business school, and I am part of the graduating class of 2023. I got involved in art through viewing art. Like a lot of us, um, I grew up looking at so many different artists, getting influences from all over, and thought to myself, I want to do that. I want to be them. Um, I'd say the first artist who I really connected with was Wyland, who is an oceanographer and um, a phenomenal painter um, when it comes to ocean life, marine science, all of that fun stuff. Um, and the conservation work that he also does in relation to that is phenomenal. Um, I've been lucky enough to attend a lot of his galleries, um, especially the one down in Key West because my family once had a house down there. I mean, my mom is from Florida, and that's where a lot of his works are on display. Um, and then Guy Harvey as well, very similar. It was ocean life that's just captured and rendered beautifully. And then that's also what made me want to go into marine sciences as well. When I came to college, I wanted to be a marine biologist going into cetacean ecology. Um, and then the pandemic hit, and it really put a lot of things into perspective of what I would be passionate about in the long run. Um, and while I was interested in double majoring in biology and then also art, um, I realized art wasn't something I wanted to put in the back burner. It was something that I wanted to stick with for the rest of my life. Um, and then, of course, similar to so many others, my influences changed over time. I got inspired by so many others. Um, and that art developed from not just my 2D sensibility, but grew into fashion design, pattern making, um, makeup artistry as well. And it's continuing to evolve and it's been lovely to not only dip my feet into art since the age of four, but really hit the ground running with it. And what's on display here from me, I have three printmaking works, which I made last year when I really fell in love with relief printmaking. Um, and then also I have one digital piece here, which is part of a series that I've done called the Grisai Self, Grisai meaning grayscale, um, which is a series wherein, of course, with it being the Grisai Self, it is a series of self-portraits. Um, however, as my major advisor, Professor Santiago, can attest, I'm quite the stickler when it comes to color, especially with my digital works. So with that, I kind of wanted to hone in on value with that series. Um, and then with my printmaking works here, um, I really am in love with the fact that the three pieces that were chosen are some of my strongest because, of course, with the works that we presented to be possibly exhibited and were up for selection, um, there were a few where I would have been a little nervous if they had been selected, but I'm really glad that it's some of my favorites that are here, um, especially with my large printmaking work, Spellbound. It's one of my favorite pieces I've ever made. Um, and surprising enough, it didn't take that long to make. Um, I probably spent three whole days from like beginning to end working on it when it came to the design, then transferring it onto the board, then carving the board. I did all of the carving in one sitting. Probably was a little bit of a mistake, um, but I think it's one of my strongest. Um, and the works here are just the groundwork for what I've continued to push on to do, which is really exciting. When making my works for this show, the inspirations that I took from were, in particular for The Al Salute, I was inspired by the Eagle Queen from Snow White. Um, unlike a lot of people, I'm not typically a fan of the princesses. I'm a fan of the villains. Um, my family can attest, Ursula is my diva. I'm obsessed with her. Um, and when it came to The Absolute, I wanted to pay homage to the absolute who wanted to be the fairest of them all. Um, and in that piece, I kind of wanted to do the same. I wanted to be the fairest of them all. Um, and then with Spellbound, with that piece in particular, um, the assignment was to revisit a composition that we had made previously um, through our time at William & Mary and give it a new spin, revisit that work and update it, make it fresh. And with that piece, I was looking through a bunch of sacred geometry and spell circles and um, a bunch of Wiccan imagery and all of that fun stuff. Um, and then 
on top of that, I was rewatching the show WandaVision. I don't know if anybody's heard of Marvel. Um, and the character Agatha Harkness really inspired me, and that's why it's called Spellbound Part 2 Harkness. Um, because it's inspired by one of the transfiguration spells that she does, where she turns a bird into a cicada, and then the cicada back to the bird. Um, and with The Girl's Eye Self, I continued that series. However, I wanted to show the fragility um, that I often don't exhibit with that series. With that series in particular, I like to be really refined, really resolved. Um, however, I had suffered a seizure in early October, um, which left both myself as Chris and then also my drag persona, Daya, quite fractured. Um, and so with that piece, I wanted to show the facade of Daya falling apart and showing that Chris within wasn't doing too hot. <laughs> um, and I always refer to her as my gay suit of armor. Um, similar to how James Mansfield put it in season nine of Drag Race, um, wherein I feel strong, I feel resilient when I'm her, and that's why she's looking at the viewer. She's challenged. Um, she's challenging. However, me internally, I, I wasn't capable of doing so. Um, and then with the last piece here, Confinement, it was a still life that we had to do, um, and we were tasked with doing a reductive print and we had to give it a split complementary color scheme. And so with that still life, when I was setting it up with the items that were available for us to select and set up, there was the mannequin and then also the head model. And I realized with this mannequin, it has a free range of motion. You can pose it, you can do whatever you want, but this head is just still, it's solid, stable, can't be moved. Um, and so I wanted to kind of juxtapose the two of them with the mannequin being in its full range of motion and then that head just stable and then I took those plastic barnyard toy fences and put them over the face kind of to resemble prison bars of sorts or as though it was behind bars and further locked in its location. This exhibition to me means that as one door is closing so many more are about to open. Um, not to get sentimental or possibly get emotional because I know it's probably gonna happen. Um, but the past four years have been crazy. Um, and never in a million years did I think that art would really be a communal thing for me. Um, but through working with, I think there's 13 of us currently in this class, but there have been a few others. I think there have been 17 total. However, three are graduating next semester. Um, I really found a second family and it's been really exciting um, getting to work with them, setting up this show, getting to work with them for the past three years at this point I've done some of them. Um, and it's been a lovely opportunity getting to exhibit here and getting to show some of our strongest pieces and really get to showcase who we are to the world as we're about to step away from college and this experience but now go on to so much more, to go on to bigger, to go on to hopefully better. Um, I know that's not always going to be the case. Um, however, this show really has given me personally a lot of hope and a lot of excitement because I know that so many of us are about to go out and do some really great things. And I hope that it's the same for me. I, I want to continue pushing. I want to continue making, I want to continue doing more. Um, like I said with the piece that I just finished for printmaking, it's what's on display here that made me really want to go even further with what I make, with what I'm doing. Um, and it's just been a, a great experience and I'm so grateful for the fact that we got to have little pieces of ourselves displayed here. It's truly been an honor and I'm very appreciative.